um, so I was when I was planning this talk, I thought I'd find a big statistic to start off with. So according to the Microbit website, there's a 70% increase in girls saying they would definitely choose to study computer science at IT after using a Microbit. So just using a Microbit it dramatically increases the amount of girls who want to take computing, which I think is a really cool thing. But in case you don't know what a Microbit is, it's a small little microcontroller that looks like this. There, um, you can program them in Python and there's some weird block language that you can use. So there's a very low barrier to entry. And it's got loads of cool sensors and buttons and LEDs and stuff on it. Um, and there's also a great text editor called New made by um, someone called Nicholas. And it, it looks a bit like that. So it's very easy to use. There's um, there's no bloat at all. It's there's no like um, it's just got very basic features, so you don't confuse new developers. And there's no yeah. And it, it was originally built to be an editor for the micro bit, so it works really well with that. You can just write your Python and click the flash button, and it'll then um, compile your Python into micro Python and send it to the micro bit. And you, um, there's loads of tutorials on the website about how to use it and getting started. So what's the idea behind you know, a micro bit inspiring students and getting them to want to take computer science? And here are some first programs people might write. On the left, you have probably your first non-micro bit program. On your right, you have your first micro bit program. And they're very similar. Um, but the one on the left, you just get the text hello world, but you wrote hello world and then the computer writes that, it's like why didn't you just write it a second time? Um, it's not the most exciting thing, but your first microbit program, you have LEDs on something scrolling some text, like you're making hardware do stuff after like seeing it for five seconds. Um, and it's also more relatable to future applications, so you've just programmed some hardware, maybe one day you'll program some like a rocket or something. Um, so, if the micro bit on its own is so excellent, why do you need a robotic arm to make things more interesting? Um, so, you have the same benefits as you have before with just a micro bit, but they're just amplified. So, you're moving a physical object, you wrote the code to make that physical object move, and it's even more relatable to future applications. So, maybe an industrial um, robotic arm, one day you'll program code to move. And there are some other benefits you can do. Um, oh, no. Okay. Yeah, no, this is the. Oh no, my slides. I'm confused. It's all right. Oh no, uh, wrong direction. So you can also do um, demonstrations in the classroom. So a micro bit is quite small, but a robotic arm is quite big. It's visual and dramatic. You know, kids sat in their classroom, oh, it's just another lesson. And then the teacher has this thing that's spinning around, moving in all sorts of directions, moving stuff. It gets their attention. So um, here's an example project you could make with a micro bit. Um, first of all, you need some equipment. Um, you need a robotic arm, which you can get from um, Banggood from China. These are all shortened URLs on my URL shortener that I made. Um, you need a breadboard, some jumper wires, and an edge connector, which you plug the micro bit into. Then all these pins, um, to, um, you have then some headers that you can just plug the jumper wires into to make it easier to um, use your micro bit with all that kind of non-soldering stuff. Um, it's fairly inexpensive for all of it, and of course you need a micro bit as well and like a USB cable to program it. Um, so the setup for this project it looks quite simple. You've just got four servos that you connect to the micro bit, um, and then you also need external power because the micro bit can't um, supply enough for the um, servos. But in reality, it looks a bit of a mess, but it works. Um, yeah, I'll get to the it works bit later. Um, then you need to 
calibrate your servos. I don't know if that's the correct terminology, but I've just written a quick Python script to work out the angles that each servo can be at because obviously you've, the servos can't move in the whole 180 degrees because there's other bits of the arm in the way. They might only be able to move 100 degrees of that. So you can write a quick script so when you press the button on the left, button A, it moves it one way and when you press button B it moves it the other and then it prints the um, the angle it's currently at to the REPL because in with Mu you have a REPL so you can um, you have an interpreter on your micro bit which is really useful for stuff like this and then you can if you note those angles the minimum angle and the maximum angle you can then implement the, that um, range later in your code um, and then so the code is not too complicated for this project you um, import all the micro bit libraries you have ser the servos connected to pins 1, 2, 3 and 16 um, not all of the pins can control servos, some of them have special purposes, like some of the pins um, are used for buttons A and B. And after 3 and 4 didn't work, I thought I'd just try 16 and it worked, so I sticked with that one. Um, and then you have your minimum angles and all your maximum angles for all the servos set in those lists. And then states just stores the current angle of each servo. And then S will be your pointer to the current servo you have and D is the amount you incorrectly angle by. Um, and then we have a simple loop that says if you press button A, increase the angle by the value D, which is 5 at the moment, and then if it goes outside of the ranges for that servo, um, make D the negative version of itself so it starts going the other way and undo the bit that made it go outside the range it has. Um, and then actually send that data to the servo and you sleep for 100 milliseconds because otherwise when you hold down the button it will just like be too fast and you have no control so the 100 millisecond delay just allows you to hold it down and it move at a nice speed then if you press button b move to the next servo and if s is falling you go back to the beginning and set d to be in the forward or the original direction again um and i would have a live demo of this but just before we left to come here, it started doing some really weird things. Um, so it doesn't really work anymore. Um, I probably could have fixed it, but I didn't have enough time to do so. But it's not just a robotic arm you can use for stuff like this. There's plenty of other ideas. Some simple ones are you can control some LEDs. I got this L-shaped light for Christmas and I thought why not stick a micro bit in there to control it so if I remember which of these goes to where with that um, if you just connect one crocodile clip to pin one and one crocodile clip to ground it will then you know, just make this working right yeah make the lights flash then you can do some slightly more complicated things that are still really simple so the pins can detect whether you're shorting them so if you touch ground and then touch a pin it will know so then i just um using the little metal multi-tools we got from red hat where are my jumper wires if you connect another jumper wire to ground on the micro bit and then to pin zero and then you connect the what uh, the one that's on pin zero to here, and then hopefully this works. Then when you does that light up? Yeah, that's that's not really working, is it? As expected. Um, but demos never work, do they? So <laughs> I suppose that shows you're exposing kids to normal. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna just turn that off. That's not. Oh, that's why it's not working. Cause I haven't sent it the new code. Yeah, you actually need to, um, so if I just uh, flash version 2, which is the micro bit, there we go. Now it will work, hopefully. Um, oh, yeah, I need to, there we go, da da da. And then we wait. So then if you ground yourself, and then, is that turning on? I don't know. 
Okay, it's still not working. But as I said, demos never work. But the idea is that you can, it's just, it's very simple to program and make cool stuff with. Um, yeah. I've finished incredibly early. Wow. That's, I, yeah, because I finished writing the slides about 10 minutes ago, but yeah, that was unexpected. Did it? Did, was it working? And I just okay. It's just yeah, like I think we have enough time, so you can there try. There might just be a loose wire somewhere. I don't know. Let's find out. Sure. Yeah. I will just ask you some questions in between. So. There we go. That works. Yeah. Maybe. So I did it. And then. Oh, maybe I'm just not conductive enough. Maybe you are not uh, grounded. Yeah, oh, maybe correctly. I'm grounded yeah. now, and I wasn't before. Yeah, yeah, maybe you should have a steel wire around your uh, hand and but, um, put, uh, <laughs> near the radiator, yeah, or something. No, it doesn't yeah. work. Um, but it's annoying that that doesn't work. Yeah. But if you then, yeah, connect the things, it lights up. And it should yeah. light up, yeah. Uh -huh. But, yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, um, I know these things work, but uh, well, so uh, that thing is also with a saw, yeah. Yeah, the thing yeah. is, if you get these from Red Hat, they're yeah. probably <laughs> not, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, so uh, that robotic arm, can you mm. again explain like what happens to it, uh, or do you have an idea why it uh, um, went wrong? Well, uh, I, I know it's trying to uh, uh, run well, away from you, yeah? I don't think the, at that point in time I was actually telling it to do anything. So I think um, there might have just been some current leaking from the um, five volts into the control lines and then that was making that happen. But for that, it's the, the motion is quite, uh, like, um, how to say that? It's, it's very random. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what was happening there, but... <laughs> Yeah. When it works, it works really well. <laughs> so, uh, what could you, what other things can you do? Um, did you try the robotic arm? You tried these uh, lights? Uh, um, some, any recent developments? I haven't, with that, actually, I have made some other things. Um, so, without connecting it to other hardware, the micro bits have a built in radio so they can send data to each other. So, um, I may, because the display is only 5x5, five five. I made a game of Connect 3 and it was multiplayer so you each have a micro bit and then you use button A to move your counter along the top and button B to drop it and play it one's um, colour is like really bright and play two's colour is a little bit dim and there's I like that the micro bit doesn't appear to have that many options it appears to be quite a limited piece of hardware it's only got two buttons and 25 LEDs, but then that forces you to be more creative and think of ways that you can combine them and make cool stuff. Did your father allow you to play also with amplifiers and stuff? Already? Um, no, because <laughs> um, sometimes when I get really bored, this sounds weird, but I'll just connect a, a buzzer to a 9 volt battery and it makes a really annoying noise, but it's just really satisfying that whenever you like connect <laughs> that it just, um, so they prefer it if I don't really use anything that makes noise. Um, yeah, I, I don't mean only amplifiers for the sound, but also for uh, the power amplifiers. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 you know. Um, yeah. No, I haven't messed with any of that yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should learn something about it before he starts to do. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so uh, when did you start to um, uh, work with Microbit or how, when did you start to develop with it? I know you had a, two yeah. years ago, you um, were already on the PyCon UK. Yes, yeah, yeah. so three years ago at PyCon UK, the Microbit Educational Foundation were there and they were giving away Microbits and so I got two of them and that day I made a quick little program as a calculator on one micro bit and then it sends the 
answers to the other micro bit and the whole idea of it was so you can cheat in a maths test you know, send your friend the answers or whatever so then um, I gave a lightning talk about that um, that night and just from then every now and then I'll just play with them because I don't have that much time to do it but yeah just yeah uh, thanks and uh so my special question on your GitLab, it says you're a nerd fighter. What does it mean? Right. Um, so in um, there's a, an author called John Green who's written lots of books and him and his brother have an online community called Nerdfighteria. And basically the idea is it's like nerds, you know, supporting each other and their slogan is don't forget to be awesome. And it's just all about um, everyone's got a bit of awesome inside of them. You shouldn't be afraid to let it out and show people. Yeah, so that's what that is. Yeah, I would say you're doing it quite well. Yeah. Uh, a little more. Uh, probably we'll just uh, let you talk with other people afterwards. Uh, thank you very much.